Welcome back to What Are Teenibs with General Disturbance. This is the Scorpion G, it's a tier 8 German premium tank destroyer. It's located on the south spawn of Overlord, and this one is under the command of General Anonymous. Game underway, and we've got no sound, so we start again as we've had to before. It's the only way of correcting the fault that Wargaming put into the uh, latest uh, clients. Let's have start there and click, and that starts us off with the engine. Off we go. Well, he's got one mark of excellence on the barrel, and this uh, premium tank destroyer is rather popular with a lot of people simply because it can do so much damage. It's got a 128mm gun, which is actually an RT gun. It's um, a Canonan, which um, the Germans use for designation of artillery guns. Say 128mm, it was basically one of the um, weapon trigger that the uh, Germans came up with, this particular model, based on the Panther hull with a huge gun mounted on top of it, but it never got put into production. It was first designed in January 1943, uh, was it? no, they started development in 1943 rather, and it was designed in April 1943, that's right. The project started in January. They went through quite a few iterations before they finally came up with the Scorpion G version. So they didn't have enough uh, Panther hulls, they were manufacturing tanks as fast as they could to keep up with the losses. And okay, we've got some targets coming to sight. One of them is a Skoda T50 and IS6. And he's got the first hit on the Skoda T50. A high roll, 502. So 582 actually. Goes for the 152. No, it didn't penetrate that one, it hit the wrong angle. Now the alpha of this gun is 490, so if you're going to get a roll of 582, that's quite a high roll indeed. With the HE rounds, and of course remember this is the reworked HE, you'll do 630 alpha. Okay, Skoda is a little more hesitant about coming forward. General Anonymous is going to sit here at the back and blast away at them as much as he can. The thing about this tank destroyer is it doesn't really have much armour. I mean, it basically is a panther tank, but the, the gun shield around the gun is part of the hitbox. So if you do get hit on the gun shield, and it's paper thin, literally, uh, it doesn't really have any armour on at all on the, uh, on the logs. So uh, if you do get hit, you're going to take... Oh, try for the Skoda! Didn't get it. I think that was dispersion. The gun, the shell probably went higher above it. Can you get another shot in? Oh, no. Took a chance. Sometimes it's worth taking a chance because you might actually have it on target. Nope. Trying for a pixel again. Not working. I say take a chance because the thing is that I've done the same and you take a chance on an enemy you see in the sights, you fire around in and you, um, if you are lucky you will get a hit. Those guys are in the bowl, that's why they're, uh, they're avoiding getting hit. They're just popping up to the edge of the bowl every now and then to spot and then pulling back down again. Or are they in the bowl? No, they're actually in that pass, not in the bowl. Looking at the minimap now. So that IS6 comes up to the end there. No, it's a target. Oh, and it hits the armor and doesn't pen. Hit the wrong angle there, I think. Go for it again. Nope, goes for the TVP instead, who's an easy target. But did he get spotted? No, he didn't. So it's okay there. Now, can he hit this Skoda? It's the long reload that really gets you. Yeah, he gets him that time. <laughs> He's out the game. Yeah, the standard reload is 12.2 seconds, and he's got 10.8, which is two seconds. Well, not quite two seconds off, but uh, it's still good. Here comes an EDR. Ruining the game for everyone. It's 
So he's seeking cover because he was spotted by the EBR. Now I think he's just going to try and take out that EBR as quickly as he can. He's locked on. Probably not the best thing to do, but... The Lorraine's going to have more chance of actually taking down an EBR because, of course, he's an autoloader with two shots, uh, one shot every two seconds and four shots in total. Now I gets another hit on that TVP. But it's a low roll. Trying to get the IS-6 who pulls back into cover. Go for the TVP again. Yes! 368 makes him a one shot. Here comes that EBR again. Oh, and we've lost the Lorraine. There's the IS-6. He can hit it this time. And yet again, he hits him, but this time around he hits him in the tracks. So he's tracked him. He is taking more damage, so he's picked up some damage. So he fires another round in. Don't, we didn't see where that one went at all. We're one tank down on the enemy. In fact, we're the only tank actually covering this side. There's an object 77 nearby. Oh, beautiful! The EBR only had two hit points left. Other people have been firing at him, but General Anonymous gets revenge on that horrible EBR. Yeah, we still dislike them. But I'm not the only one. I know that lots of players hate them. Um, I think after Arty, EBR is the most hated vehicle on the battlefield. And he gets a lock on and blind kill. Well, near enough blind kill. He just locked onto the target and blasted and got the kill. Very nice. Okay, the IS-6 has gone behind that house for cover. Or is it a rock? I can't remember. I think it's a rock, actually. He's going to have to come out sooner or later. Can't stay there forever. Two tanks down the enemy. There's the IS-6. Our object trouble sevens moving in. The IS-6 might have to make a move or die. He's starting to take arty hits as well because he's getting stunned. And that's an M53, M55 firing at him from the beach. Okay, we're going to force him out because uh, General Anonymous has decided he's going to move in from one direction. The Object Travel 7 on the other and it's the T... Oh, it's the Object Travel 7 who actually gets him. Okay, we're now in the end game. There's only four enemies left. Furthest one forward is the FB4202. But we did just lose our Scorpion G down on the beach to their Yudas. So it's suspect that the Yudas, the enemy Yudas, is out the beach area somewhere. Okay, there's the enemy Scorpion. No shot. The FB4202 around the other side of the bowl. He should have shot when he comes around this corner. He does. He locks on. And, yeah, nice hit. High roll, 516. He's now up to just under 3k of damage. Wait for the reload. Don't go forward before you're reloaded. So you'll take a hit. Oh, and he goes. Which means now there's only three enemies left. Now, we know that Scorpion's north of us. We think that the Yudas might be down by the beach. Because he took out our Scorpion down there. There's the Scorpion. Yes! And a high roll, 539. Okay, he and the Object Travel 7 and the Super Push, you can move forward now. And it's the M53, M55 who gets the kill. And that means now there's only two left, the T30 and the Yudes. This is where it helps having the speed of that, uh, that Panther hull. The enemy Yudas is in sight. He didn't go all the way down. He's all the way and he gets a nice hit, but it's a low roll, 462. The T-30's been spotted. He's up the other chine. Can we get a shot on him? No, he's gone down. He's going down. Oh, difficult shot. I'm not sure it's worth it, actually, at this angle. You might as well change position whilst you're waiting. There's the Yudas behind the rock. He's down by the rock, actually. No, no chance of getting a hit on him. In fact, it looks like he's going down to the beach. 
T thirty stand in the chine. You're not gonna get a shot. Not from this angle. The super Pershing can see him. Best best way to deal with him would be to actually go around the other side of the bunker, the or the gun emplacement, and attack him from the bowl. Because he's not going to expect to be hit from that direction. But he has been taken out of the game by the C-54E1. Which means now it's only the Udes. This tank destroyer has the second best alpha after the SU-130PM. And they're both premiums. And of course the SU-130PM was basically the Soviet version of the scorpion and they got the victory so this uh game over let's have a look at the end of battle results here's the end of battle results and it was the first class tanker for general anonymous in this rhyme metal scorpion g he managed to get a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in fact he managed to get five exactly and he got the high caliber sitting at the back there blasting away yes he picked up more damage than anyone else in the game his win eight in that game was 6613 which is super unit come standard let's have a look at team score there you go top of the table 4441 hit points the next high score being that t30 with 3,455, and after that it was the Yudes with 2,782. When it came to kills, he actually shared the top spot with the other Scorpion G on his own team. Both had three kills apiece, then there's a whole bunch of tanks with two kills, and when it came to base XP, well, he's got that one as well, so he's got the top in all three columns. 1,176 went to uh, General Anonymous. I think he was actually anonymized in that battle. Uh, 1,090 went to the T26E4, the Super Pershing. And 1,084 went to the Object Treble 7-2. The other Scorpion picking up 1,052. And those are the only players who managed to get over 1,000. You can see that basically they were the ones who scored most of the damage on the enemy. So four really good players in the battle. Only one of them actually died. He fired 20 shots in that game. Got 14 direct hits and 11 penetrations. Damage of 4,441 hit points, of which 3,925 were up more than 300 meters. He received one hit. It was a penetration. Yep, he did lose some hit points in that game, and he got spotted by the EBR. Damage seven of the enemy, killed three, did 679 hit points of damage assistance, and got four capture points right at the end when the Udis was killed. On a freed player count, he earned 76,164 credits, and after repair, ammunition, respawn, and consumables took away 50,264 credits profit. He got 1,176 base XP, 78 for this being a premium vehicle, took away 1,254 experience points altogether. So, a very satisfactory battle. You can make a lot of profit if you use the Scorpion from the back of the map and in fact uh, it's one of those uh, tank destroyers where if you sit there and just blast away you can pick up a huge amount of damage because of basically because of the high alpha of the gun the only problem really is that long reload and the fact of course the armor is very very thin and this vehicle stands very tall which makes it much easier to uh, spot and penetrate plus of course uh, war gaming over years have kind of uh, nerfed it by making it inaccurate, as uh, as you noticed during that battle, quite a few of General Anonymous's shots didn't hit the target, and that's because the dispersion on this tank is is not very good. It's um, well, even stationary, it's uh, 0 0.25, uh, but or 0 0.29 is the is the dispersion according to the book. But yes, you notice a lot of shells don't go where they're intended to go. Some other tank destroyers are much more accurate. So, yes, you can earn a lot of credits from this vehicle, but you're going to fire a lot of shots to get those credits, uh, simply because a lot of the shells are going to miss the target. So it, it helps to be closer to the target because you're very much less likely to hit. But if you're closer to the target, the enemy's more than likely going to hit you as well. So pick your choice. If you do what General Anonymous do, did, then you might pick up a high caliber and a lot of credits. But if you get too close... Yep, you'll get perforated. I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm.
Alright, this one's gonna go in. It's my last one, I swear. Alright, can I open up? And thank you for watching.